All right, Shalom. We're going to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto you. How about Shemar, Shabbat, Shemar, Kakodash, the bondage of the apostle, that is a great millstone. And Shalom to Allah, I came out to push in the word of sincerity and the truth. You know, I just wanted to do this lesson on Yahweh Shah and his return. You know, whom the world ignorantly calls uh, Jesus Christ. You know, they um, read about the Lord in the scriptures, you know, uh, uh, and who are they? Two thirds of uh, the nation of Israel. You know, you blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and really, you know, whatever um, Christian or uh, 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 I would say biblical denomination you you stem out of you know you read the bible and you uh embrace the viewpoints of the bible but you know jake reads it partially you know they're taught you know whether they're um you know protestant or episcopal or you know uh you know christian catholic they are taught of a narrative of the bible you know which is all false you know fallacy lies and trickery man you know when when you see your uh, pastor on that pulpit teaching about whom the world you know calls Jesus Christ they have the uh a, a strong strong false image of of how the lord is is going to come and, and what he's going to deliver you know which i grew up in a, a christian church uh, most brothers grew up in a christian church and we already know the rhetoric that pastors you know preach about Jesus Christ you know you you go into those churches and you see um white Jesus plastered all over the churches, you know, when you sit down, you know, in the congregation, you know, you um, sit down to to listen to the pastor's sermons and, and uh, you know, you listen to the Bible, you know, and, and you hear of, of nothing but good, sweet times, you know, especially when the Lord comes, he's going to come and he's going to, you know, join everybody hand in hand and it's going to be, um, you know, love and prosperity and uh, celebration from you know, beginning to the end, and there's going to be no more, you know, hell and havoc, you know, which they twist, you know, the Bible, and they treat, twist the precepts, and this is one book which I have queued up, Revelations, you know, that pastors, I never heard of, you know, any pastor going into these, you know, deep mysteries and revelations, and this is something that these pastors never go into, you know, the, the type of true energy that Yahweh Shah is going to come in. You know, and that's who the world calls Jesus Christ because Yahweh Shah is angry and he's extremely furious. You know, you know, the uh, Romans crucified him 2000 years ago. You know, you read, of course, in the uh, Gospels of Yahweh Shah, you see the tra tragedies that he had to suffer. You know, he got tortured. You know, he got his, you know, his um, hands pierced. You know, they pierced him. They put the um, the crown of thorns on his head. They beat him. They buffed him. They spit on him. They They mocked him. They killed off all his men that was uh, 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 fighting for the cause. You know, Peter, James, John, all those men, the disciples that were uh, accompanying him and helped support him, feed him, and take care of him. And it was even a lot of women that died um, that was in the company of Yahweh Shai. You know, and then even in these times now, they, they um, changed the narrative of the Bible. But you think the Lord is in, in happy spirits, you know, that he's in the heavens of... Uh, um, you know, just jump roping, you know, or, or, or goddamn, you know, eating cotton candy, you know, basically in a a, a a festive spirit. And when he comes down, he's just going to come down, you know, levitating on a, you know, basically riding on a goddamn cloud, you know, and, and in the spirit of just, you know, wanting to um, excite peace. No, the Lord is a man of the war. The Heavenly Father is a man of war and his son, his only begotten son is a man of war. And when he comes, he's going to come to bring war. And that's all throughout the Bible. All right. And this is one of many scriptures which I, I bring out, Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw when the, the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold, a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right. So. This um, horse, which that word white represents pureness, the horse represents power. The Lord, when he comes, which he represents this um, this horse, he come, he's going to come with pure power. And it said, and he sat on him, had a bow. That bow is going to be an instrument of cruelty and an instrument of destruction. That's why it says, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Because... Which I'm gonna get that in Revelation the 19th chapter. When the Lord has come, He's gonna take down all nations that have assembled, and that's basically um, 
took the throne and, you know, basically, you know, they, they lied about the truth. You know, they um, rewrote history. They rewrote who the, who the true Israelites were, you know, and they, they um, Job 9 and 24, they covered up, you know, the um, the judges of the earth, the angels. You know, you believe in, the, in these days are uh, so-called white men. You believe that God is white. You believe that Jesus Christ is white. And all these things are extremely far from the truth, you know, and that that boils the Lord's, uh, uh, you know, blood. You know, that's why the scripture speak about how the most high is furious in Nahum, um, if I'm not mistaken, the second chapter. It also speaks about how these are, are, are as fire in my, uh, you know, you know, fire or, or you know, they blaze my nostrils. You know, when somebody has heated nostrils, you see that, you know, like a like a dragon. You see a dragon when it's extremely angry. You see the the, the smoke that steams throughout his nostrils. That's that's the anger that the Lord has. And the Lord is, is not going to stop until he, he actually um, relieves that anger. And how is he going to actually relieve that tension? By putting hell on these, these different heathen nations that have, um, you know, beat us down. Lamentations, the first chapter, all throughout the book of Lamentations, it speaks about how the nations uh, just did us dirty, man. You know, even in today's time, look, look at the conditions that we are now as a people. The blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, we sick, we in poverty. You know, um, our leaders were killed. You know, our children have been molested and tortured and, and fed drugs under the rule of the so-called white man. And, and the Lord sees all. Proverbs 15, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 3. Scripture speak about the eyes of the Lord. Amos 9 and 8 also speaks about the eyes of the Lord. And the eyes of the Lord are the angels that's keeping records of all things. And they give reports on the status of this place. And when the Lord hears about what's going on, that just furthers his anger. So when the Lord actually steps off that throne and he comes down on the planet Earth, he's coming with an extremely large axe to chop heads off, man. You know, you got to think all this hell that's going on, you think the Lord is just going to come down and he's going to, um, you know, kick it at the round table. He's going to get him a, a seat at the round table and kick whiskey shots back with Trump and the, uh, you know, the board of the good old men. No, he's going to come putting putting hell and, and uh, you know, putting his feet on the neck of his enemies. All right, Revelation 19, and I'm going to start at um, 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. Verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. That's the same white horse in Revelation 6 and 1 verse, and also verse 2. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So the Lord is going to be the main protagonist, you know, and in the, the, the light of this world, they, they're going to look at him as an antagonist because what he's going to promote war. And then say that he's um. You know, he's, he's going to defend. It says that he's going to make war. So when he comes down, he's going to be the first to, do, to uh, you know, fire shots, so to speak. You know, it's, and it's not going to be no um, no cease ceasing uh, from from this uh, uh, war, this this war Armageddon, this world war that's going to take place, which the Lord and the angels are going to actually be a part of this war. It tells you that, you know, the, the angels and the, you know, the fleets of, of the Lord's men are going to be, you know, in perfect harmony, you know, behind the Lord in this this war. What it said is birds flying, shall the, so shall the Lord, um, you know, fly over Jerusalem. And it said that we're gonna, he's going to defend us, you know, and we need that defense. Because what? In this this time span since Yahweh Shah left, we've been trotting the sun to 70 AD. The white man um, through Titus, the son of Vespasia. You know, what he he came and invaded Jerusalem. They starved us to death. They beat us. Like I said, we got scattered all throughout. We ran to one part of Africa and all throughout of um, Africa, Asia, and Europe. We got captured from them. We, we got put in captivity. We forcefully uh, working and tilling the land. You know, we got forced into the uh, American workforce and all these different workforces all over the, the uh, world. And we're still without nothing, man. That's why we need a savior. And in order for that Savior to free us, he has to take us away 
from the person that holds us captive, which is the so-called white man. You know, and a lot of people don't like to hear that. They don't want to hear about war. They don't want to hear about judgment. But we're in a time of war and judgment and, and we embrace it, man. In order for us to be, you know, for these chains of darkness, which really that goes into the flesh, but really the, these chains, these physical chains that this white man has us locked in or spiritual chains that he has us locked in, in this um, system, in order for us to be released, it has to be somebody that's going to uh, free us. As it is written, and no man shall buy you. So it has to be somebody that takes up the tab and gets us out of this captivity. All right. And that person is going to be Yahweh Shah. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Yeah. So when it speaks about that flame, that flame of fire and the crowns of the head, you know, you could tell that that's that's all, you know, synonymous for warfare. When you watch these ancient period pieces of, uh, you know, overlords or kings, you know, that, um, you know, had a very expensive uh, world rule or dominance, you could you could see how um, how aggressive they were. You know, it wasn't easy for them to take take down all those realms and they couldn't have uh, show in innocence to the enemy. And the Lord is the king of kings, Lord of lords. It says that every knee shall bow. So, you know. The, the the political leaders, you know, your your sultans or your prime ministers and your presidents, you know, all these individuals that sit on the throne, you know, um, that have a, a certain position. The Lord is going to take, you know, take down all these different kings and, and these different kings have a, a, a what? What do they all have in common? They have a military, you know, Bel Belgium, uh, just giving an example of countries, Turkey, Croatia, the Philippines. Hungary, Russia, China, the list goes on and on. You know, Saudi Arabia, America, they all have militaries that protect their um, government. So when the Lord takes over these government and, and his government is established, you know, what, is, what does it tell you in Matthew, uh, the second chapter, that he shall govern his people. So when the Lord's government is fully established and he governs the whole world, he has to take down all other governments. And these other militaries are extremely strong. I was uh, looking at this video earlier, you know, with um, the, the the Navy released this video of these high high energy laser weapons. And these are some of the weapons that they're going to look to use on you, Shah. But it's, it's going to be all to, for naught, man. This is an example. Just a couple of seconds, you know. And they the, the government... The captain of the government, Captain Carey Sanders, the commanding officer, they say he spoke about continuing to test the limits and capabilities of his technology. And this technology is going to be used in the heavens to try to shoot down the Lord's angels, to try to shoot down the Lord's the Lord himself. Because what does it say? That all eyes shall see him in Revelation, the first chapter. All right. And when all these different people see him, what ha what's going to happen? The, the troops are going to uh, fly up and they're going to try to take him down shoot them down whether they're going to actually shoot a missile in the sky or they're going to use these laser weapons or they're going to use high power drones or they're going to use their um their bombers if i'm not mistaken their b-52 bombers and their fighter jets and all the um aerial aerial uh capabilities they're going to do everything it takes to try to take your shot out of the sky and the lord is going to uh he's going to fight back all right because when he comes he wants war you know, all this hell that um, this white man has put upon us, you know, the Lord, he wants to show that he is, you know, basically he is the king and that nobody has the strength of, of, of Yahweh Shah, man. Revelations 14, 14 and started 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrusting thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Yeah, and this is the time of, of the reaping, man. You know, like you'll see the image of the grim reaper and the Lord is going to actually reap and deliver us. But he's going to come with that that sickle uh, to actually, you know, you know, thrust also. That's why I tell you in verse 16, and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. Yep. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, 
and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his, his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of the Most High. And the winepress was trodden without the city, which the word without is on the outside. And that winepress represents the blood of, of these people. You know, when you would have a wine press, you would uh, accumulate, you know, tons of, of grapes in that wine press. And you would have a person that would take out their shoes, make sure that their feet were clean. And they would go in that wine press and the, the whole job was to stomp and smash and grind those wine. And it would press through a, a presser and it would um, basically liquidate those grapes. And the, the blood of the grapes would uh, be extracted through extraction point and it would drain into a bucket. And the harder that you, you, uh, you know, stomp and smash, the more uh, um, wine that would come out of that wine press. So what is this synonymous for? The Lord grinding, smashing and putting his wrath upon the people. And it speaks about the, the amount of, of, of uh, blood that's going to come out of this wine press. It says, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse's bridle. Now, when you go into a horse, a horse is extremely uh, tall uh, uh, animal. And the bridle of that horse is extremely tall. You know, it says by the sp space of a thousand and six hundred four lows. Yeah. So when the Lord's come, he's going to come and he's going to he's he's not going to slow down. You know, it's a lot of individuals that have spoken against the Lord, blaspheming the Lord, that hates the Lord. And he's not going to come in that spirit of, you know, 2,000 year, years ago, you know, where he allowed the Romans to uh, crucify him. He'd allow himself to be uh, berated and mocked and, and talked down because he had to fulfill prophecy, you know. But this is the time where he has to fulfill the prophecy of putting down the enemy. And he wants to do it. Hey, he's a he's a great servant. Yahweh Shai is a great servant for the Most High. So when the Lord gives uh, Yahweh Shai that charge, which the word charge goes into command, him and the angels to, to come and chop heads off and tread the wine press, you know, and take these different nations down. The Lord is going to do it and he's going to do it with um, pleasure. You know, it's not going to be hesitation. He's not going to think twice. He's not going to feel sympathy or empathy. He's not going to feel, um, you know, sadness or remorse for the people he's taking down. He's coming with, he's coming in the spirit of wrath. All right. And the only people he's going to have, um, a level of sympathy for is the ones that have that mark pursuing Ezekiel 9 and 4, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Yeah, the slain of the Lord shall be many. The seven billion people on the planet Earth, the Lord is going to have an extremely high cutoff rate. There ain't going to be no two, three, four hundred people that's going to die. It's going to be hundreds of thousands, millions upon millions of people, if not billions of people that's going to die personally from the hand of the Lord. You know, you watch these different uh, movies with so-called UFOs that came, come down and you see, um, like, if I'm not mistaken, um, War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. When Tom Cruise got caught up in that UFO, you seen all the people that was uh, just ba basically held captive and it was getting grinded and, and mushed and it was getting spread like fertilizer all throughout that land. It was so much damn blood on that um, that land in the movie. It didn't make sense. And the Lord is going to come in that same spirit. So you got them Christians that try to come against us for being, you know, they call us black Hebrew Israelites or extremists, you know, saying that we uh, push the spirit of death. You know, we just reading straight out of the Bible. The Bible speaks about death. The scriptures have said right here that the Lord is going to come with fire and the sword and he's going to plead with flesh by slaying many. You know, this is the same book that people uh, hoop and holler and sing all happy days in the churches. But they don't really get into the intensity of this book and see that this 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 word is, um, you know, very grim to the ones that don't cooperate with it. You know, and it also tells you in Second Chronicles 15 and 13. That small or great, you know, if anybody doesn't listen to the to the ways of the Lord, they're going to be put to death. 
you know, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, you know, I just want to do this lesson on, on basically the return of the Lord. We always got to go into that spirit, you know, how the Lord is going to come. Because a lot of people have this picture in their head about how the Lord is going to come, and, and they're they're sadly mistaken. All right? So I want to end it by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto you. How about you, man? I was shot by Shura Kakodash. Double honor to the apostle. That was a great millstone. Shalom, Amak.